Cheers, my man. Well, Cheers. I appreciate you coming through. Thank Shane you so much Shane Frederick. For me. I know you as a drummer. And not that much else. I feel like I always am happy when I see you, and I don't feel like I know a whole lot about you. I know. So I'm excited to dive in more. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, this is awesome. This isn't usually something that I really have the opportunity, you know, in yeah. doing. So this is really cool, and thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I guess in a very general sense, it's kind of been like who I have been in the scene mm -hmm. um, musically. Um, I've been in a number of bands, and I've kind of been like a hired gun for a lot of bands recently. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Man, to really kind of encapsulate, like, is the way, like, our relationship is yeah. exactly kind of how I am, like, musically. Yeah. Um, There's coasters here if you want to use oh, that instead, sure. whichever is cozy. Like coaster? Um, yeah. Or you can yeah, rep, leave a drink the, there. Oh, that, okay, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, this is a little sound foam, oh, gotcha. so you can't hit the table and bump cool. it and make too much noise. But, yeah, that's Toxic my little Earth. trick shot. Perfect. Toxic uh, Earth, dude. Yeah, lo rep the local the art is the so bruise. Cool. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's a... Uh, Abomination. They have all of these crazy, unbelievable arts. Like it's like a Cthulhu thing or something. I want to be like the artist for beer cans. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, and especially cool this company, guy. they yeah. they they kill it. Um, but hell yeah, let's get right into the yes. dumb stuff. Yes. Uh, so my yeah, uh, episode seventeen is one other piece that I forgot to say, uh, which feels like a lot. I feel like I've been busier than life should ever be lately, mm -hmm. which has been good because I think coming into this month, I thought I was gonna be underwater by now, but I feel like my head is still like <laughs> hanging in there, good, good. <laughs> which is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seventeen episodes in, we're flying. Uh, first drum set. Where does drums start for you? So I want to go back. Yeah, are you two years old, fucking hitting pots and pans? Where does this thing get going for you? You know, I, I kind of premeditatively, if that's the of correct course, way yeah, to yeah. describe that, I was. Thinking of my myself when you were asking me to be on the podcast, I'm like, what you know, what what questions could could mm -hmm. the good sir ask? And you know, sure enough, I, that was one of the things I was Hell thinking yeah, about, dude. And I actually have a very specific how I got. Hell into yeah, drums. okay. The game Burnout Two for I think PS Two. Uh, it's not. There was a PS Two sitting right there that uh, Burnout Two was on. Burnout oh really? Point of Impact oh. was the one. Is that the same one? That's the one. Yep, I believe yep. that's the one. We uh, my buddy was here and we had. Just so much fun crashing cars. And we were down here. It was one of those things we were going to like, oh, let's go mess around for half an hour. Yeah. And then like six hours later, it's 3 a.m. We we're still down here crashing cars on a PS2. Crash, <laughs> the, the the police pursuit yep. part. Like, yep, yep, yep. talk about gold standard for gaming. Yep. So um, essentially, I think what kind of, it's like a interplay between like two big things. Um, my brother, uh, I'm originally from Western Mass, okay. Springfield, East Hampton area. And my brother who's uh, 10 years older than me, he, he would always be playing shows in um, Northampton and opening up for these huge, you know, the big Western mass bands. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of what got me, like, like the preliminary exposure. What were some of those, like, big Western mass bands? Yeah, so um, Pearl Street in Northampton, which used to be the spot where they'd have unbelievable shows, um, they... Open for All That Remains, oh, hell yeah. Kill Switch Engage, okay. and Shadows Fall, I think, all in the okay. same night. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and that was in... That's like a lifetime career condensed into It, it was incredible. Hours, yeah. All of those bands are from Western Mass, I, or at least most of the members are from yeah. there. And that's kind of what got me so interested to see, you know, you have your older brother playing with these huge bands, and you're playing Guitar Hero, and then, you know, you see these songs in a video game, and, you're, and you, like... I, I had that appreciation at a young age, realizing mm -hmm. like the surrounding, you know, like the the huge bands that we've been, all of us have been listening to for the most part. Yeah. Um, and then Burnout Two, I don't know, it was like the intro song when the game started. Like I just thought it was like the funkiest, like sick little drum groove, and like, you know, I was already like air drumming to it, like just kind of naturally. Like I never once said in my head like I want to play drums. Yeah. I just started like. I don't know, doing weird stuff, and you know, when I listen to bands, I just start kind of like doing what I guess what younger. Are you like you ten? Know? Are you five? Ten. Okay. I, I think I was ten when okay. I when I got my first drum set. Okay. And burnouts around the same time. Yes. Burnout takes you right into the drum set. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so um, now that we're actually having this conversation, all this stuff's coming back. Oh, please. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it Give me was all the goodies. I'm gonna just slide. Oh, sure. Slide just the hair. Thanks. Keep us keep us rolling. Yeah. First um, drum set right around good old days. I was ten. Um, my parents, we went to Florida, Orlando, doing the Disney thing, and mm -hmm. my dad had known that I had wanted a drum set for so long, and he saw the the fire in my eyes mm -hmm. and, and, and the passion. And so when we were in Florida, 
uh, I, I just asked. I was 10. I'm like, hey, Dad, did you give me a drum set by any chance? And he's like, did the whole dad, hey, buddy, sorry, we just we couldn't swing it this year and yeah. stuff. And Spent all the money on Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm like, I understood, but just the sh- like the internalized devastation just yeah. hit me so hard. And then he just saw, I was just like, I was like, oh, okay, dad. Still love you. It's okay. Yeah. And then uh, he saw that I was like pretty like sad about it. Mm-hmm. And then he handed me the drumsticks and I'm like, what's this? And he goes... <laughs> You'll see when you get home. And oh, then hell yeah, dude. we went home and the drum set, he already set up the drum set and That's everything. Cool. And it was just like a day I will never, ever forget. Okay, hang on. That feels like uh, I, I'm totally missing the point here. But logistically, giving the kid the drumsticks in Florida and then having to fly home after is like, I don't know if he's making you like have good behavior on the plane because you have drumsticks. <laughs> so it's like, here, here's a good thing to distract yeah, you. Yeah. Or is he just like taunting you and making those the hours, the longest hours of your life? I think he wanted me, he wanted to be an utter, utter surprise. <laughs> Got and, it. Okay. And probably just saw how sad I was. So by giving me the drums, he, he let me know at that point gotcha. that there was, there was a drum so set. So he probably planned to do it when you got home and yeah. then saw the crushed eyes and was like, okay, let's appease him a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't like, what the heck, dad? I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was just like so hoping to get a yeah. drum set, you know? Yep. And 10, uh, 10 year old me was just like, you know, like any 10 year, old, 10 year old would be if they, you know. And then the skate. better question there is yeah. dad also a drummer? Like, how does he set the drummer up? Does he trust Guitar Center to come in and do it? Like, um, he just, he did it. He's a super savvy technical guy, okay. you know? Um, and at that point, we, we were kind of, I think, going to Falsettis once in a while in, in Springfield and, you know, pricing out stuff, looking at drum sets. And by that time, I'd already gone to a few shows. Um, my first concert ever was uh, Static X, Stained, and Low Pro at the Hippodrome in Springfield. Okay. And that was just everything that I wanted to be and absolutely just in, like, I was just so into metal and hard rock and, again, seeing my brother. They, they were – he was in a band – um, a long time ago called Yucky Octopus. Okay. And it was, the only way I can kind of categorize it was like experimental, kind of mathy, pretty freaking heavy. And I just was inspired by that. So oh. I had all of these, you know, um, modes of inspiration all around me between, you know, the again, to, to reiterate the, the scene, you know, being from Western Mass, these big Western Mass bands, my brother playing, um, I know I'm all over the place. Dude, but keep it. To kind of go back to what we were discussing, I guess, regarding my um, my dad and his ability to like set up the drum set, mm-hmm. is a lot of people will ask, because I, I thought you were going to ask if my dad was a drummer or anything mm-hmm. like that. I'm pretty much the um, only musical person, I would say, on my dad's Interesting. side. Okay. But my dad is extremely artistic. Like he He's super humble about it. He goes, oh, you just take your time. But I mean, he like paints these incredibly intricate p- pictures and drawings. Interesting. Okay. And I don't know if I don't know if it reciprocated to me in a musical sense. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's... Not to give too much information, but is he yeah. working like a technical job? With, like is he some kind of engineer doing something that's creative for work? Or is he something totally different and just has this creative passion underneath? Uh, uh, Pretty, uh, pretty different. He was a Springfield police officer. Okay, that's for, cool. For twenty years, okay, uh, about twenty years, and then he's you know worked for you know government jobs and okay, you interesting. Know. So that's yeah, not who you'd expect to have the creative yeah. underbelly. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah but cool. he's he's super cool, like yeah, yeah. goofy, kind of like me, you know. Mm. Um, great guy. Hell yeah, love you, Dad. <laughs> you mentioned uh, first shows, and also I know my parents. We've talked to my parents. Listen to this, yeah. and my mom always laughs. There's always mom shout outs. There's never a dad shout out. So shout out, shout, <laughs> shout out, out dad dads everywhere, and mom. Love you guys. <laughs> um, hell yeah, you mentioned first show stuff, and that's also a, a fun thing to me. Of like when I'm when I'm at a show and I am working. Like there's a you can be at a show working, having fun, and there are times where you're at a show and you're just working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In those moments, I try and remind myself that this is someone's first show and try and, like, uh, have live that experience. Yeah. Because it's such a weird and powerful thing of, yeah, we're at so many concerts so often. We're so jaded about how cool this thing is. Yeah. Uh, and even sometimes when I'm shooting a show that's a longer thing, like a festival type deal, I'll try and go just, like, sit in the parking lot for half an hour in the middle of the day and just, like, forget what this thing is and just try and, like, remove myself from it so I can re-enter it and be amazed by it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, yeah, first shows are just such a fun thing of like, it's just a show. Everyone else there is just living their life. And somehow for you, it is this transcendent moment. Oh my God. Uh, and for me, it was, my first show was, uh, it's an easy one to remember because it was on a 9-11 memorial. So it's 10 years after. Okay. So in 2011, 
uh, and it's an Avenged Sevenfold headliner at the Xfinity Center. It's Avenged Sevenfold, Three Days Grace, Bolt for My Valentine, See There, and Escape the Fate. Okay. Like, about as good of a show as I could ever ask sure, for. Sure. And, like, full production, the full, like, death bat on stage, like, just the whole nine yards. Mm. And, yeah, I frequently go back of, like, I don't know if that was the best concert I ever saw, but it's in the favorites just by timing. Mm -hmm. And it's fun that, yeah, when we're at these shows and it's like, I don't really want to play tonight. There's not that many people here. It's like, Mm -hmm. not one of these people is having that moment right now. And that's a a wild thing to be aware of. Right. And just, and just so I'm understanding, you mean when you're actually playing at the show? Either or. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I guess I've never actually played a show, but for me shooting the show or, yeah. Okay. I I understand. Um, yeah, I think it's, a nice perspective refresher to kind of put yourself in that shoes of that first, yeah, that first moment. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. What else, do you remember anything else on the first show? Was it like scary to go? I mean, what, yeah, what was your, when I went to go see, um, stained and static mm-hmm. X and low pro, it was, uh, definitely overwhelming, Yeah, you know, cause you know, I was probably one of the youngest kids there and that's yeah. a pretty heavy, heavy show. Yep. And it was cool to see stained, of course, playing in Springfield, you know, yep. that being their roots. Um, but just, it's weird when you think about things now that I'm a little older, you know, I'm going to be 31, yikes. Um, but there's like, you, you're the memories and the way you perceive things as you get older, it just, mm-hmm. it holds more of like, not to be cheesy, but like a magic to it. Yeah. Because it's just, you, as you get further down the road, it's, you want to hold on to those things. Like I am mm-hmm. like painfully nostalgic about stuff. Like yeah. I have all my old consoles and mm-hmm. I tried to keep all my old tickets and old games and everything like mm-hmm. where I'm not borderline like hoarding stuff, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but enough stuff where, <laughs> you know, saying, keeps, yeah. keeps one arm in the past for yep. me. Um, but yeah, ever since that show, I had just been, it's, it's, it's as vivid as it was the day I saw it relative to today hell yeah just like you said the it's the production it's the it's this it's the immensity of sound it's just this new experience you know Mm -hmm. it's euphoric yeah it's incredible yeah and then from there i just every weekend i'm like what's the the next thing we're going to and Mm -hmm. you know um every year after that my dad brought me to ozfest oh okay which was fantastic. <laughs> Ozfest that became Rockstar Mayhem Festival and mm-hmm. went through all the different changes, but it was essentially the same thing. It was a yeah. metal festival. Yep. Um, and it's unfortunate they don't really do that anymore. Yeah. You know, just like I know, uh, you know, the, to me, there's like two two sides. You have like the Warp Tour folks mm-hmm. and you have like the more Ozfest folks. Yeah. Not to saying there's this, <laughs> you know, polarizing yeah. difference, but, you know, there wasn't a lot of things that I was particular, particularly into. You know, when I look at the Warped Mm -hmm. lineup, like I would see like, you know, I could cherry pick a couple bands where I'm like, oh, like sick. I could see them on like the OzFest bill or something, but not enough for me to, you know, Mm -hmm. because in in middle school, I was definitely in the Disturbed, Slipknot, Kill Switch It's Red Sox Yankees. You both like baseball, but there's two different flavors of it that we like. Exactly that. Um, Yeah, I was definitely on the Warped Tour side of things. I went to the Rockstars, the OzFest. I've done done them, but yeah, I think the Warped Tour is definitely more more of my home, which is interesting to me now that I'm... I think more involved in like the deathcore world of stuff, which is I think kind of more of the mayhem rock star. I feel like that's kind of the offshoot of that more mm-hmm. so. Um, but yeah, that's definitely my home. Is that kind of that soft stuff that I think we're all embarrassed to listen to now? But jammed back in the day, hard as hell. Hey, no harm, no foul. I have no problem admitting what I. I mean, right. I listen to so so many different things now at this point. Like oh, yeah. I definitely have like what I'm pursuing like yeah. musically, but I have, you know, just like you, we've had these conversations before. You know how. I, I I was always curious. I'm like, oh, you must be a metal guy. You mm-hmm. must be into this super heavy music because you're filming for all of these yeah. bands and yeah. you're like, eh, you know, and I'm like, oh, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I definitely am. I think that's my home, but yeah, 90% of what's coming out of my Spotify is some form of rap that is not something I qualify as good rap, but rap that I love listening it, it, to. That's all that matters. <laughs> if you enjoy listening to it, so be it. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, so when do drums, when do you start playing shows? We got to our first show. We got our first drum kit at 10 years old. When does the first band kind of take form? Oh, that, I did like talent shows okay. and it, it was kind of, I don't know, that that was a real mixed bag. Oh, um, yeah. I was trying to find you know, kids that were into the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, The high school that I went to, it was, you know, very 
not, I don't want to say it was not metal friendly, but you'd have, you know, the amount of people you can count on one hand that's <laughs> yeah. like both wanting to pl- perform that music and that's fully, you know, immersed into that kind of scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been known as, and it's not a superlative that I've given myself, but everyone calls me the proggy kid or the genty kid, yeah. which I have no problem <laughs> wearing that badge of honor because that's kind of like how I was like, yeah. especially like later in high school, Hell yeah. which brings me to the next point. I believe today is Periphery's 11th anniversary. Like the birthday of P1 is today actually. Hell yeah. Which is probably my most influential album, which is really cool that we're having this conversation now. What I could shatter your life right now. I'm not sure I even heard that record. P- know, P- uh, Periphery one? Yeah. I'm familiar with there's one uh it has a it's a race car. The song's called Race Car and it's like an eleven minute song on it. Yeah, that's P one. Is that the one? Yeah. So I do know that's like the only one I know. So yep. it is the one I know. Yeah. The Jetpacks was yes, is the oh. only one. Yeah, okay. Banger of a song. So I do know that yes. album. I do. Okay. That's literally the only periphery album I know. Yep. Um, hell yeah. Okay. Fire. So hang on. So yeah, when does that talent shows? We're kind of doing that. I assume it's middle school, high school yeah, talent show stuff. And we played a talent show in like East Windsor High School, like a couple like Bless the Fall songs, oh, I hell think, yeah, and dude. stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, it Everyone wasn't... else is juggling and you're up there playing metal court. <laughs> I did do our, our high school talent show. I did uh, Brick House. <laughs> okay. Which was really cool. I yeah. had like a fedora and yeah. like some sweet shades <laughs> and got all dressed up. I mean, who doesn't like Brick House? Yeah. You know? Got seventh place, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, something like that. It wasn't even in the drawing, but, you know, it's fine. Hell yeah. Um, so I think, I guess, where I guess I would talk about maybe where drums, where I started getting more integrated into, I guess, the more professional Connecticut wide reaching scene. Um, the year was 20. I want to say 12, okay. 2012, a couple of years out of high school. Um, I connect with a couple folks on Facebook and it was just by super, super random kind of coincidence that I, mm-hmm. I stumbled upon this. So I know I said I was kind of getting into like the proggy genty thing around the end of high school, but I really started like getting into it, into it, like actively listening and actively trying to emulate you know, the grooves and trying to get become a better musician mm-hmm. after high school. So I kept seeing this thing, Gent, Gentleman's Club, spelled <laughs> D-J-E-N-T, and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. And I know this has been a hot topic, a very controversial thing where mm-hmm. people are like, Gent is not a genre, <laughs> which... Okay, if you want to look at the actual literary <laughs> definition of it, it's not. It's, Dude, you know, is blue a flavor of Gatorade or a color of Gatorade? I like that. <laughs> Does a bear go poopy in the woods? I feel like mathematically, oftentimes <laughs> they do. Does a tree make a sound if it falls? So we get into gen- sorry, I totally derailed you. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we get into getting into gen. And yeah, I think gen is a, a hard one because it's so inaccessible to a new musician. Of like, yeah. uh, for me as a good Charlie kid, it was like learning guitar was easy because I had all the good Charlie songs in my head and. Mm-hmm. Those are, yeah, a great way to learn guitar or yeah. drums or any instrument for that yeah. matter. A periphery fan trying to learn drums is like, uh, yeah, you're, that is not an entry-level task at all. Yeah, yeah, what is, how do you kind of scale up to that task? Um, I, I was fortunate enough to take drum lessons uh, with a fantastic, probably my favorite drummer, Clark Siebold. Mm-hmm. He is just everything that has inspired me, you know, jazz cat rock i mean he he does it all i mean absolute top notch f- pretty much got me to where i am today hell yeah the only regret i have was not being as serious um he was very regimented with me and really wanted to push me with rudiments and you know just all of the things that lessons come with mm-hmm. but you know at a younger age all you want to do is play the songs that you enjoy and, you know, go as fast as you can, play as technically as you can. Yeah. But it's kind of like, especially jumping into the whole prog metal thing, it's it's definitely better and I would say advantageous to have, you know, a background and yeah. a more formal approach. I mean, there's – and the, the cool thing about the whole prog scene is you don't need to have taken lessons to be amazing. Like a lot of, the, a lot of these crazy musicians are self-taught, mm-hmm. you know. And there's much to to say about that, you know. There's 
it's almost like the lack of formality can almost maybe lead you into directions where maybe being formally brought up would keep you more contained or more, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a plateau, if you may. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I took lessons for a while, and then I felt like I was kind of plateauing at some point. And, like, when I was starting to get up in my higher teens, I was, you know, want to hang out with my buddies, do dumb stuff, yeah. and just yeah. be out and about. And not that I, you know, I fell out of love with taking lessons, but at some point I, I know I didn't have, like, the intellectual maturity or the focus mm-hmm. that I think my my teacher wanted me to have yeah you know yeah. and that's the only because I, I i always i don't regret but i always wonder if i had like really been mm-hmm. super regimented and really kept with you know just doing all my rudiments and stick control and all this other stuff who knows where i would be mm-hmm. you know um it is what it is yeah. you know i i i i love drums from a uh, i want to say a hobbyist perspective as well like i never once kind of said to myself that i want to go you know, I want to be a touring musician or I never had like a, a set goal that I wanted to reach some particular aptitude that I need to get here. You know, I just love drums for what they are. And, you know, where it's brought me is great. You know, I like, you know, like we were kind of touching before, I, I've been a hired gun for a bunch of bands in Connecticut mm-hmm. and I'm continuing that path, which is awesome. And I, I love to see where the Connecticut scene is going now because, you know, again, being 31, you've kind of seen, like, you know, there was, like, the highs and lows of, like, Connecticut metal bands and Massachusetts metal bands. And at, at one point, like, you know, maybe, like, six, seven years ago, I mean, there was just an absolute lull. Like, there was no one was doing anything. The venues were just kind of drying out a little mm-hmm. bit. And now everything is just, like, exploding again. Yeah. And it's so nice because it, it sounds weird, but now I'm seeing, like, the younger you know, mm-hmm. relatively speaking, I'm still young, <laughs> but you're just, I'm seeing all like these young 20, 20 year olds and yeah. they're just killing it. Yeah. And part of me is like trying to essentially just stay relevant and, you know, wanting to keep up because I have to be a little bit more on the maintenance side of things. Mm-hmm. Cause I just, yeah. Starting to feel it in my bones a little bit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Drums are weird in that they're so physical. Uh, yeah. I wanted to go back. You mentioned like looking back on high school and wishing maybe you had practiced more thoroughly or kind of stuck with the, the rudiments and been a little more disciplined in that. Uh, I think it's an interesting talking point in general of just like how much of this craft is about being a good drummer and how much of it is about getting into a band. And I think uh, it sounds like you kind of went social and or focused more energy socially and took some of that away from the rudiment side of things. Yeah. Um, but I think being a good drummer isn't worth anything if you don't know the people. And in some sense, I wonder if there was actually benefit yeah. that's un, unforeseen to you or, yeah, impossible to quantify. Mm-hmm. But that, yeah, getting involved in the scene and rubbing elbows with the people mm-hmm. and going to the shows was better for you than sitting in your room learning paradiddles and yeah. whatever the heck the other rudiments. That's the only one I know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, other rudiments. Uh, and I think with I wonder the same with cameras all the time of, like, you get in and you want to think that, like, oh, the best music video is the best camera, the best lens, the best lights. And then slowly it's like, no, 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 the best music video is you just do it. Like yeah. you're, it, you can't, there's not a, I, I can't give you an amount of equipment that will give, make you produce a good music video or mm-hmm. anyone. And same with me. Like I can't, yeah, I'm going to produce what I'm going to produce and you can give me a Hollywood budget or no budget. And like, sure, budget affects stuff, but like sure. there is a thing that's going to come out of me regardless of that. Um, and I wonder drums, yeah, if there was a a benefit almost to not focusing on the rudiments and getting out and exploring the world. So you could be a higher drum and connected to all the, all the people you're connected to now. Yeah. Um, it's, that's a great point. So I actually just went to, to see a band with a couple friends of mine called Arch Echo. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, dude, I love them. Yeah. They're so sick. Yeah. Yeah. And their drummer, um, Richie, I don't know. I'm, his last name split, slipped in my mind, but he really hit home with, if you want to be a professional musician, you know, get into his caliber, Mm -hmm. you need to put in the time you need to be doing, you need to be doing the homework. You have to be doing, yeah, you know, the rudiments, the studying, the theory you have to, because those guys are going to Nashville and, Mm -hmm. you know, they're doing the big band tour stuff. Sure. So I think it's a happy balance. Like I think, how do I how do I kind of quantify this point? So you can have all of it. You know, you could be a very regimented um, musician as a drummer and hitting home with all of the things that you should be doing and still 
be putting yourself out there. It's going to make you more marketable because obviously if you know, you're a tighter drummer, you have you know, better hand-foot coordination and technique, mm -hmm. you're going to get looked at. Um, which also brings me to this point about the Connecticut scene. Um, the amount of talent mm -hmm. in Connecticut alone is like almost unquantifiable. It's insane. You know, I every 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 day I you know, I'll just be looking through some post of another band. I start, you know, click surfing through a bunch of other bands. Yeah. Oh, here's another Connecticut band. Yep. Oh, here's a really good guitar player. Where where are they from? Oh, Northern Connecticut. Oh, there's another guy that's starting another band in wherever the heck in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Um it keeps all of us, I think, the scene. The reason why I think it, everyone has such a high caliber I, I would say like there I, I and I and I'm being totally honest you know out of all of the local acts that I see going because I you know I love going to the Webster it's right up the street mm -hmm. for me it's been home base for a long time and yep. for for many of the folks that have been doing the metal thing for so long it keeps it almost like in a healthy competitive way because mm -hmm. everyone is so freaking good at what they're doing yeah it keeps everyone honest yeah. you know and that's why I always you know, talk to all my bandmates. I'm like, you know how fortunate we are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I always try, you know, it's like any little scene there. You see some drama going on here yeah. and there, people saying dumb stuff. And I just say, yeah. just don't, don't be that way, you know, because yep. everyone, everyone's driving for their best. You know, this is all a form of art. You know, there it's, it's all very subjective, but at the same time, like I yeah. do feel a little bit you know, there is like a, a, a competitive air mm -hmm. in Connecticut, which I think is actually, again, to reiterate, a great thing. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think there's some amount of healthy competition everywhere. Oh, I think absolutely. The, uh, no. To your point, I think like when Dreamwake announces their recent headliner run of shows, I think it's like a Friday through Sunday and they're yeah. doing like Rhode Island, Connecticut, and I assume Massachusetts, Vermont. I'm not totally sure. Yeah. Um, I should have known that before I brought it up. But um, yeah, they're sick. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because like, yeah, if whether you were asked to play that show or not, them selling tickets helps your band. Absolutely. Whether you open that show, whether you have nothing to do with them, like mm -hmm. just them doing that and showing that the Webster, like, hey, we can, the local scene is going to show up. We are going to sell tickets. Like that helps band XYZ, whether they're involved or not, because yeah. hopefully in a year when they're at that stage, now the Webster has some, yeah, pre precedent, some example to trust them with a thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's, um, it's easy to get in the mindset of like, well, I didn't get to play the Dreamwake show. They didn't ask me. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, no. That would have helped you more. Yeah. But you are still getting help by it. You are mm -hmm. still benefiting from the work they're doing. And I yeah. think that's a yeah, a wise thing you mentioned of like, yeah, there is a, a competition there. We do want to sell more tickets in Dreamwake, but like yeah, regardless, you both win in that in that exchange. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's not like a yo, fuck them, yeah, then we're good. As yeah. long as it's like a dude, I want to see if I can do more than that. Like, right. Cool. Let's do it that way. Absolutely. And I can't reiterate on all right, I, I just a huge point. Um, it's always the absolute best thing to do is support all the local bands. And I'm not just saying this to sound like a hero or anything, but you know, I, I'll go see a show. I have friends, you know, they can, you know, I could walk into the website. They could be like, yeah, we can just sneak you in here mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. I never do that because yep. I, I always like to, you know, I'm a huge advocate for local music, especially how proud we are to have all of these bands. I mm -hmm. mean, Currents, Shadow of Intent, Dreamwakes, you know, getting pretty freaking big. And I mean, Euclid, Kevin's mm -hmm. other band. Um, I was actually watching the podcast and I was listening to, uh, the things he was saying about Construct Paradise. Mm -hmm. um, and not to deviate again. I know. I'm like, Dude, this, is, this isn't like, because this is a thing. I don't, this isn't like a normal thing that I usually do. So it's just all of these thoughts are just like firing off at once. Please, okay, no. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I don't know how much I'm supposed to stay on one line of thought and how much I'm allowed to like deviate. And of yeah. course, the answer is I'm, all, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I'm supposed yeah. to do whatever I want. And if it makes me happy, then cool. I'll keep doing that. But yeah, no, I have the same thing often of like, ooh, I want to interject with this question, <laughs> but I feel like I started this line of thinking. Yeah. So. Yeah, no yeah. worries. We're on the same page there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trust your gut. I'm, I'm enjoying it. So, so go from A to um, Z, take a left. Fuck it, dude. The alphabet's <laughs> optional, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> so you know, seeing like Euclid get get you know a huge response for yeah. their first show. That was a sick show. Um, Speaking of which, we just put yeah. out the full live set of that. Uh, I, I watched it actually so, before I came here. Hell yeah! It released it, I think like an hour ago. Actually. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So if you are listening to this. 
go watch that. That's yeah. a cool thing that we watched. It's super we sick. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I worked on that with uh, Vinny, I believe his name is, the audio guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he did the audio, and then I mixed in some like room audio. Uh, and yeah, so to have that first set on camera. And I think just a yeah, first set is a cool thing to be a part of. Yep. Um, so that's fire. Um, hell yeah, dude. When do you get into your first show? When do you uh, – yeah. Like, when, so like, I guess with, relative to like more of the Connecticut, Massachusetts metal So you scene. start playing drums somewhere in high school. When is the first time you're on stage and you have stage fright and you're shitting yourself because you're like, oh, no, I've never been up here before? Um, I would say the first time where I was actually a bit worked up is um, I played in a band called Avalation mm-hmm. back in the day um, based out of Springfield, Mass. And it was at the waterfront in Holyoke and we opened for... God, who was it? Legion back in the day. And like one of my all time favorite bands, um, Substructure, like super spacey, genty prog metal. And that was like one of the bands that kind of like opened up a lot of horizons, just to name a few. You know, the there's also, I think, a golden age for a golden era for some of these bands. Sure. Excuse me. You know, the Contortionist, Volumes, Substructure, Veil of Maya, I'll even say. Born of Osiris, The Discovery. Um, around that time is actually where I... It, it was like, again, it's all kind of perfect placement, being, mm-hmm. at, being at the right place at the right time. All of these bands started dropping all of these absolute banger albums right at the same time that I started discovering them. So you see all these huge releases, and of course, you know, the Sumerian tours, and mm-hmm. as you're finding these things, and, you, and then you see them, they're coming to your hometown, and you're like, this is great. So... Again, I deviate. Um, first show, Waterfront, Holyoke. Um, that was the first band that really kind of incorporated um, the progressive elements, mm-hmm. you know, everything that we were kind of chasing. And that was the band that I was in the longest. I mean, beyond beyond um, just, you know, musically, we were all super tight. Mm-hmm. I mean, hangouts sleepovers i mean we'd have friday fry nights we had a fry later and we put the most unhealthy things in the fry later like what is a fry later fry later it's like a it's like a little mini fryer for like french fries you can okay yeah but i mean we would we would go to the like gas station and just buy all of these ungodly things we'd like fry up a payday fry up a snickers like just be like, you could literally just smell the oil like coming off of our skin it was absolutely deplorable <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. We were just like mad homies, <laughs> just like frying shit up and like yeah, yeah. playing music and stuff. But but every great thing comes comes to an end eventually. Sure. Um, our our guitar player moved down to Florida to pursue his other stuff, and um, another friend of mine that recently actually moved to uh, was he in Maryland, um, Mr. Joe. Joe Tiago, probably my biggest inspiration, like guitar wise. Hell yeah. And, you know, miss him dearly. You know, he's, you know, doing well and stuff. But, you know, we, we still keep in communication, but we always say it's like if, if, if we all stuck together, like we, we, we had like something really nice, you know, yeah. just again beyond. I'm not trying to imply like, oh, we were going to be big. Sure. But it was just, it was such a nice thing to have such a camaraderie yeah. with friends. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been in bands where you just do the musical thing and you don't yeah. really hang out outside of music. Kind of stinks, yep. you know, yep. and, I, and I get that, you know, not everyone gels like that or, yeah. you know, there, there's more of a business-esque end to that. But, mm-hmm. I mean, we were just hanging out all the time, hiking, camping, freaking trips to New Hampshire. It was it was a blast, you know. Uh, as you mentioned, Avalation, I think they were like on one of the first or second shows I ever shot. Do you know if they opened for Angel Vivaldi? Yes, at the Webster. That was, I think, the second or third show I ever shot. The first show I ever shot was right before that. And it was this, like, yeah. Finnish, Swedish metal band. And there was 12 people there. Yep. And we were, one, we those, were one of the local acts. Um, but then, yeah, Angel of Aldi would have been a couple days after. And that would have been... Because when you said Joe's name, I was like, oh, dude, I have, like, a... I had some, like, nostalgic, like, warmth to him. And I was like, what is yeah. my connection to him? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think they played that show and I connected. I wonder if you were there. You probably were there yeah. playing. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Funny yeah. how that world, world's come back together after all this time. Absolutely. <laughs> um, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, we played with the contortionist there too, which was an absolute just, you know, I could die happy kind of thing. Now. Yeah. You know, yeah. they've just, again, been a, like a pinnacle of inspiration for all of us. Um, and they were super cool. It's always nice too to, to meet a band that you've been a fan of 
and you're always a little bit worried because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mm-hmm. say there's there is a certain band <laughs> that I had met one time that just absolutely put a bad taste in my mouth. I'm there like, is I'm not asking you the name, but there is a band that you met. There one is, time? there yeah. is. Like I, I I like drove super far to see them, and I was just like, oh, you guys are great, and they're like, thanks, man. That's the worst. Yeah. They're like where can I sign? I'm like, yeah. cool. <laughs> Got it. All right, here's <laughs> but, my twenty dollars that I owed you. Yeah. Oh, the contortionists was they were so cool. After we played our set, they like came up and they're like, oh, we dig the prog thing. Do you want to come hang out with us in the basement? I'm like, <laughs> say less. Yeah. Absolutely. Hell yeah. And we were just just shooting the shit about all kinds of stuff and Mm -hmm. they were just very helpful like even musically they're like you know this is some of the inspirations we take from this band and you know at one point um the drummer i I think actually sent me a book that he was studying like like a rudimentary groove book and stuff like that and that's like it just makes you like their material even more you know you just have the true you know the advocates, the ones that are trying mm-hmm. to uplift that community, because yeah. it is still. I mean, it's it's bigger now. Like metal, you know. I've had these conversations with so many of my friends, and how metal has just like evolved, mm-hmm. where it's gone from. You know, you, you have your generations of like you know you have your like eighty hair hair metal band, and then nineties kind of got like what grungy maybe okay. kind of went to new metal, and then all of a sudden like you have this mm-hmm. new, really broad like progressive thing okay you know because when i tell people i like prog metal they're like oh like dream theater i'm like kind of not really and yeah. like i mean i like yeah. I, I i appreciate the drummer but like you know mashuga i think is what really kind of popularized like the really heavy mm-hmm. groove oriented like machine style kind of music and of course periphery you know popularizing the gent word Dude, and it's the 11th birthday of their album by the way is it <laughs> What, what P1, is it? Periphery, P1. Yeah, what? it's their 11th birthday, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Wondering. Yeah. Um, uh, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, you talked about being a hired gun for a couple of things, and I've got a list of a couple of the bands that I was able to track down that you're hired to gun in, <laughs> um, and I'm sure there was some more that I uh, missed. The first one here is uh, As Within, So Without. I know you played on the main stage with them at the Webster yes. Theater last year. Yep. Yeah, tell me about that. Who, are you, who is the show, uh, who are you in support of? And then, yeah, what was it like being on the main stage for the first time? Oh, it was nuts. Uh, we actually had a technical difficulty. It was it was such a crazy night. Um, I believe it was Chris Wiseman that had facilitated the meet and greet with those guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Chris. Um, and, you know, they sent me their tracks. I'm like, this is sick. Mm-hmm. Difficult to play. Yep. Big learning curve. Yeah. What else to expect from the CT scene, which is awesome. So yep. it's, it's a good thing to complain about. Um, they're good musicians, which is inherently a problem. But yeah, that's a great right? problem to have. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that night we were supporting Attila. Uh, he is legend. I believe that's the name. And I'm drawing a blank on the other group. Anyways, so I'm all fired up. I'm nervous. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna just get a little release. Did you practice with them? Is this your first show playing with them? With, yeah, we, we practice. I think we practice maybe like two or three times. Okay, so you got some experience. But yeah. Before the show, you're nervous. You're ready. You're going to yeah. I interrupt you. You're going to do something. Yeah. So essentially, like what you know, I just they sent me the you know the tracks and I just listened to the videos on YouTube and just kind of you know all right, what's the first ten seconds like? What's the next twenty? What's the next thirty? Or section one or two or whatever. Um, so we, we we had a, like maybe three or four rehearsals, and then we had the show. But I'm like you know crap and bricks and stuff. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw it out in the pit. What happens to me? I take a full haymaker right in the face, split my lip wide open. Oh, damn. Yeah, right before I go on. But you know what? It actually kind of like shocked me awake, and I wasn't like nervous anymore. Yeah. But it kind of sucked because I had like this fat lip and stuff. Oh, damn. Yeah. So to, you know, add salt to the wound, I go up on stage there, you know, um, I'm getting assistance as people are, you know, helping me bring stuff up. Mm -hmm. And there are my bass pedals in two like not in the good two, like they were <laughs> totally broken, and I'm like, I'm like looking up, and I'm like, this would happen to me, you know? Right now, they were, yeah. I mean, they were super old, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I knew that day was gonna come, and I and I, I mean, I was already using like, you know, the hell is it like super glue for metal to keep things together and stuff. So of course, it's it's no one's fault. They probably just put it down, and it it, it snapped at like it at, at the base yeah. plate, which is not good. And luckily, I had that stuff in my backpack, and I squeezed, and I dude. This is so bad. So the entire audience is waiting. Unfortunately, the set got cut by like two songs, which Damn. really sucked. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Yeah. 
So I'm like squeezing out this freaking metal adhesive and I'm freaking out. There's the whole audience. The lights are on me. Everyone's kind of watching what I'm doing. I'm like, this sucks. And like, I'm nervous. So what do I do? I have this, I have literal, um, this glue Glue, on my finger. I freaking itch my eye, dude. I put like metal adhesive glue right in my eyeball. And then all of a sudden I can't see out of my right eye. I have a cut lip. Oh my God. Dude, I know. And I was trying to hold it together. I was cool. But I dumped that whole bottle of adhesive and it worked. Like it just, you have to hold it for like 60 seconds Mm -hmm. and then it bonds. As soon as like we got done with like the whatever second or third song, my pedals broke again. So they've been replaced since then. So it doesn't happen again. (laughs) Yeah. Holy hell. A fist in the face, putty in the eye. (laughs) God damn, dude. That is a that is a first show and a half. Anything that will happen. And of course, that's yeah. your first time on a stage that big to 2,000 people, 1,000 people. I think the room's like 1,200 cap. Yeah, it was, it was packed. It was pretty packed. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely wanted to make sure that I was tight. I, like you're filling in. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I forgot right. about that Especially part of this whole thing. you know... Some of the bands, so I was in Avalation. Do you want me to just go through the list? Because I, I actually had to like write it out. Like, oh, the, I got okay. yeah, we can chat them. Yeah, yeah. So Avalation, I was in the longest. Um, then I joined a band, Arcalus. The, we did the music video. Absolutely, we, yeah. We love it. We saw, uh, I was watching let's, today. Let's chat there for a second. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Avalation, we touched on, yeah, because of the, the first show. It's funny we crossed paths there. Uh, yeah. Arcalus is a good one to chat on. So the music yeah. video, yeah, we did a music video called Thy Father. Thy Neighbor. Thy Neighbor. Yeah. Not Thy Father. Thy Neighbor. Uh, I'm so bad with song names, and it's I kind of horrific that I work like that's my job is to know song <laughs> names on some level. <laughs> that's my job, and <laughs> no clue. I can tell you everything about that video except for the name of it. Uh, but that video is a good one to talk about because I think when we filmed it, uh, I'll preface this: deathcore videos or videos that are that heavy can be kind of hard for me to edit sometimes because I don't feel like you get into a a rhythm. As, it's not like I'm making a. When you had a melodic song, you I feel like I'm working with the vocals. And when I'm working with a deathcore song, I'm following like the drums so much that it's like programming drums where it's like I'm just putting these little pieces of stuff next to each other that aren't in themselves exciting. And it's not until you make a hundred of these things that you mm-hmm. now have three seconds and now that three seconds is exciting, but yeah. each piece of it is not individually exciting. And so there are times where I finish the deathcore video and it feels like I just haven't done anything because I didn't feel like I got into the the normal rhythm that I got into, I was just focused on the, yeah, the cadence of it. It's so such a fast and frantic thing. So that was a video that I sent off and I was kind of like, ah, I think they're happy with it, but I don't, nah, I don't know. I don't know about it. Uh, and then I had this, I went back and watched it and I was like, holy hell, this thing, this is fire. I oh, love this I- thing. It's sick. It holds up. I'm, I'm dumb. I was in my own head. Uh, but I thought it was just a good example of like, how bad judges we are of our own work most of the time mm-hmm. of like yeah now that i am a couple years removed from it, i can look back at it and be like oh that is pretty cool yeah but in the moment it's like i don't know and i think that's true of everyone with songs and music and whatever i love that video yeah i i, I literally watched it right before <laughs> hell yeah dude, I appreciate that. Just, it was getting me in the you know i was thinking about you know what questions you're gonna ask mm-hmm. I, was, I was watching you know some more of your podcasts mm-hmm. and our old music video. It's only Absolutely, it's yeah. only like what a year old now. Something at this point. like that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember. I think we came to you, and we just kind of figured you as a creative would be able to run with the idea that all right, the song's about a serial killer. Mm-hmm. We're gonna release it on Halloween. The practice space already looked mad, like dingy yeah. and spooky because it was it was a storage space. Yep. You know, so you know, you throw a couple like red lights. You know, simple sometimes is more. There's mm-hmm. you know crap hanging from the ceiling. I'm like, this could look really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. make it a little chaotic, chaotic. You yeah. know, black and red themed, and it came out more than we ever expected it to. Hell and like yeah. we we're like, this definitely encapsulates the idea of something that's like dark, ominous, heavy, evil. Hell you know. Yeah. So, and it's like, even like musically, that's not even really my forte, but it's mm-hmm. like a cool theme that we were kind of going yeah. for, you know, yeah. cause I forgot what serial killer Eric wrote about <laughs> it, but it's, it's, it's definitely like more on the definitely heavy death course. Side, yeah. But yeah. Hell yeah. You guys still kicking? You guys still working on stuff? <sighs> yes and no. Sure. Um, we're kind of in pursuit of other things at this time, mm-hmm. um, and again, another perk of being in this Connecticut scene, it's like you might be in like two different bands, but you have two of the same members in each. Sure, yeah, so you're yeah. just kind of all, it's like a big web. Like one of these yeah. days I'm just going to draw out like the family web of Connecticut. Like everyone's <laughs> probably connected at some point. But a lot yeah. Of incest, yeah. 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 Right. 
we're all like some kind of cousins down the down the road, you know. Um, so yeah, Arculus is it's just kind of stagnant right now in all transparency. And you know, it's not like I'm trying to be careful. Oh, no worries. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't want to get you into trouble here. No, no, no. It's it's just sometimes I think we start having a little bit of creative differences and people evolve and people want different stuff. Mm -hmm. And not saying that my heart resides with Arculus. It's just I'm really chasing a new thing at mm -hmm. this point because I feel like Connecticut has features a lot. It's, 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 you know, it's no secret. It's dominated by deathcore, mm -hmm. heavy, heavy stuff. Not a bad thing at all. It's mm -hmm. sick. I love it. And, and everyone's super talented and great at what they do. But, you know, I, I, I kind of want to start, you know, pursuing a different track. You know, I look at, you know, bands like, you know, for example, like I think Dreamwake, I love, I love their sound. Mm -hmm. I love just, you know, their, you know, the structure of their, of their tracks. It kind of remind me of um, like a, like a CT based novelist, which is really cool. Um, and they, they have a really cool, like, I don't know, like a nineties aesthetic, mm -hmm. like kind of old retro vibe. I'm like super cool. Yeah. You know, it's super cool to have that diversity in Connecticut. So I guess I'm kind of more in the camp of not being, cause Dreamwake's still freaking heavy, mm -hmm. you know, but they definitely have more of the groove orientation and the melody. Yeah. And in my own personal project, um, I'm, uh, chasing, uh, chasing that kind of thing. Hell yeah. Um, so. That's a fire segue. Yeah. How much are you, uh, let me back up. So I, I'm aware that there is a project in the works. Um, how do you know? I saw you type it on Facebook. That is my source <laughs> of everything. It's like once someone types it on Facebook, I can officially say it on the uh, podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm all, never sure of like, yeah, if someone's coming on and it's like, I know you have an album coming out in a month, but like, I can't talk about the album, but Understood. we both know there's an album. Yeah. Um, but once they type on Facebook album, it's like. I got gotcha. yeah, you. Yeah. Can't, you haven't announced it yet. You yeah. wrote it on Facebook. It's real. Yep. <laughs> whether you like it or not, whether you meant to post it or not. Um, and so in this context, I know, and I'm also, I think you mentioned that you're producing part of it, which I think is an interesting yes. part of, um, yeah, have you, you've got to talk about the drums and getting into music. Is the computer part of music something that is very new? Or is yes. That this, is the, this is probably the biggest shift in my musical endeavor at this time. Hell yeah. Um, Tell me about it. Yeah. What is it like to finally get into the chair and be the one producing the record? All right. So... There is a band that um, Joe Tiago from mm -hmm. Avalation had sent me. He goes, dude, you got to check these guys out. And he sent me this band called Carmen Jaka, Carmen Yaka to be proper on the enunciation, pronunciation. And I just, all the bells went off in my head. And like, I, I just said to myself, I want to start writing guitar parts. Hell yeah. I don't know how I'm going to accomplish that, but I'm going to. Perfect. So then I started just kind of going down the rabbit hole of, I dare I say, MIDI. Um, it's a very controversial thing, you know, because mm -hmm. real guitar versus real... Yeah. Excuse me, real guitar versus fake guitars, MIDI guitars, programs, drums versus real. Mm -hmm. I have no... I, I don't have a very varying opinion on it. I'll just say from my perspective, um, I I have a background in you know, again, mu just musical learning and, you know, I, I, I've gone through theory and scales and just watch and, and just, you know, very, I've picked up various things watching mm -hmm. all my talented friends play guitar in front of me for years. Yeah. So, you know, I just kind of like, almost like through osmosis, I'm like learning mm -hmm. what scales are and what chord progression sounds correct and how, how to formulate them together to sound fluid. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know if it was maybe Chris Chris Wiseman or someone else had like told me that there was a plug in. This was years ago and I totally I like I omitted it from my mm -hmm. memory. I just I was like, eh, it's probably some real cut and paste kind of not great sounding thing. Cause I'm like, how good can a program guitar get? And then um I I ran into another one of my buddies in Guitar Center in Southington and he 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 mentioned again that there's this thing, you know. Again, uh, Chris had told me that there's this plugin called the Odin. Okay. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. And then you know I started doing the YouTube thing and looking into it. I'm like, holy crap, it's incredible. In my in in mm -hmm. my opinion, you know, because for me as a drummer, I don't I I just feel I don't want to say I'm like 
underutilized because I, I, I want to contribute a lot more than just, oh, here's a sick groove, here's a beat, oh, here's a cool fill. And it's just very frustrating for me because I feel like I'm just, I'm very trapped in mm-hmm. this like, you know, the, the, this rhythmic world versus the more expressive one. And, I, you know, I, I would have ideas and I would sit there with my guitar players or whomever and I'm trying to like mouth out something like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, do this, you know, or something like that. You can only get so far with that. Right. So once I found this band, Carmen Jaca, and, you know, just start, I started doing all this research on, you know, the type of machine I need and what's a good DAW to use and amp sims. Like, I, I'm, dude, I'm as green as the grass Hell yeah. when it came to this. Like, I don't know anything about production. I don't know anything about channel EQs or compression or any of this crap. Mm-hmm. I just, like anything else, it's just like you get passionate and, and you have the fire, mm-hmm. you know, it'll come. So back in last October, I just said, you know, I work, screw it. Start, I just started piecing out everything. I got mm-hmm. myself a nice iMac, all specced out. You know, I got Logic Pro, got the Odin. I got, um, the hell's that? The amps in my have, Gojira, mm-hmm. Archetype. And just those elements, I, and I got a little 49 key, um, keyboard, mm-hmm. and 49 key keyboard, and I just started, you know, just screwing around. I love that, yeah, yeah. Just messing around. And then, you know, just consulting with all my buddies, you know, I, I was going over, you know, Kevin's house. Like, I'm like, hey, man, can I come over? Can you, like, just teach me stuff? I'll bring, like, a little notebook. And yep. I just sat there like this, and he was just showing me how to open a session and, like, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And f- since then, I've, you know, I've got a very rough working demo for, like, what will be, I guess, my solo project. Um I just, it's something, it's not like I'm trying to even necessarily like go anywhere with, I don't have like an end goal in mind. I just, I just love to make music and I want to, I want to be, I want to be more than a drummer. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely want to be more than a drummer at this point. It's exciting to branch out. And yeah, I think uh, you kind of started with saying that, uh, I think you said it a lot more politely and in my blunt terms, it's that songs are usually written for a vocalist. They're written for a singer. They're written for someone to look pretty on stage and then for four guys to be behind them supporting them. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably oversimplifying that and I'm sure there's a guitarist out there who's pissed off that I said that and a drummer who thinks they're more valuable than that but like at least in our warp tour world like that's not the case like if mm-hmm. yeah an orchestra is written for everyone but what we're yeah we're talking about putting lyrics on t-shirts that is yeah. the goal we can't put a drum part on a t-shirt we right. can't sell that right bottom line yeah. uh well and, the, fr- and but, the frustrating thing is too is that like I have a couple friends like well why don't you just learn how to play guitar I'm mm-hmm. just like you know what the learning curve <laughs> In that entails, like... How old were yeah, you when you started? Yeah, right? Yeah, I'll be, like, 40 by the time I can play, like, Smoke on the Water or yeah. something. Yeah. So it's just, it's easier for me because, like, it's not my goal to... I mean, if I have time, like, sure, like, will I pick up a guitar and noodle around? Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe. But, sure. like, um, you know, me working um, in IT as well, I just feel like it's just so appropriate for me to be programming guitars, yeah. too. You know what I mean? It's just fun, you know? Like, and it's so close. It for is. so much of what you want. Like, I'm not that I'm the music guy who would yeah. be the expert opinion on DAW MIDI versus, or yeah, MIDI versus real stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you can get 95% of the way there with 0% of the headache, then yeah. Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Uh, and even that's like, it's only going to get better. Like the world's only going to get more MIDI. Yeah. And I have this in, in video stuff of like, there's a real good argument that I should never do anything that's not green screen ever again. And I think that's extreme and I'm not like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not actually going to not- do that. It's um, not green screen? Correct. There's an argument that I should do everything exclusively via green screen right now. That every time I go to a warehouse, it's like uh, similar to real mm-hmm. instruments. Like there is a benefit to being in the mm-hmm. physical space. Sure. The issue is that if I do that in the green screen, that warehouse can be twice as big, half sure. the size, blue, red, mm-hmm. bright, dark. It could be Middle Eastern. It could be South America. Like it can – the the range it's is limitless. unlimited. Yeah. And with MIDI, it's the same thing of like you can play the seventh fret on your guitar yeah. or – you can program it and then drag it up and down and see which note you actually want and right. how long you actually and like there's so much more manipulation and freedom there and yeah. you can get into the the artistic debate of like well are you taking the human out of it and it's like no I don't think so if you can play it um, what's the difference but it's an interesting you know. debate that I think is happening on a lot of fronts and yeah, yeah in music it's happening and for me in video it's happening yeah. and like in in Hollywood it's like yeah they don't 
shut down city blocks anymore. It's not worth Mm -hmm. giving New York City a billion dollars to shut down one block of the city to film Batman. Right. Like, it's better to just have a warehouse, paint the whole bitch green, and then make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no threat for Batman to be on set in the middle of New York City. There's no travel for him. Like, he can just go to a warehouse that's empty and safe and Mm -hmm. secure and, like... Yeah, there's no reason not to. And now with green screens, we're getting to virtual stages. Yeah. So instead of a green screen, it's a it's a real screen. Yeah. And in real time, we can gen- generate a background behind you, and we can move it, and we can decide the tree should be on this side of you, and mm-hmm. just move the tree. And it's like, man, the further that goes, the it's just a waste of time to go to the neighborhood and film it. Because yeah. even if you're gonna get a better result now, it's like you don't get the learning curve that will get you in the game. Yeah. And it's this weird thing of like, yeah, it's it's not reasonable for me to say fuck every warehouse, fuck your house, fuck wherever you want to go. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting. And yeah, I think MIDI is the same thing of like, yeah, it's not worth saying I'm never going to record guitar again. Yeah. But there is a lot of value in learning how to synthesize it. And oh, even if absolutely. it's short, it's an investment in the future. That's well worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And from a hobbyist perspective too, it's like, yeah. you know, not to be selfish, but I like the fact that I don't have to, mm-hmm you know, bring anyone in. I don't have, you know, if I need help with like a compositional perspective, Mm -hmm. sure. But like, you know, and to kind of touch back on some of the issues, because I've been in so many bands at this point, you know, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, as they say, Mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of people that want creative input and then it causes friction and then Mm -hmm. it start and then it can snowball into something else. Yeah. You know, again, now with this, this, this era of technology that we're in, I can sit there crack a beer in my room just i got i literally have my xbox on one monitor and yeah. then i have you know yeah. i'm living i'm living my best life and you don't all, need I'm a guitar guy. strings you I don't, don't need, need the guitar you don't need mics you don't need cables no. you don't need time to learn the instrument like, and, the, and the thing is though yeah. like if, if anyone's gonna you know I, I can understand it coming from an organic perspective right, right but the right. thing is the 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 matter is i'm not using ai mm-hmm. you know i'm not i'm not you know, this is all coming from me. You know, yeah. this is something that I'm creating from my mind yeah. with no other, ex, you know, you know, external sources other than the plugins that I'm using. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's where I kind of have another argument that you can't ever compare MIDI to like anything close to AI because my buddy showed me an app where you just, you type in a progressive, you know, progressive metal song with melody loads in like 30 seconds and it's like a half decent like metal song i'm like interesting yeah. it's kind of discouraging though you yep. know what i mean because mm-hmm. you you have so many people and same thing and i think it goes for visual arts Definitely. as well like yeah, yeah. you know like if i want to generate like you know for my solo project for i'm saying you know mm-hmm. whenever i actually finish like you know i got that one track i got that one track and i got a couple more coming down the pipeline but of course i want to have a cool album art for it and stuff mm-hmm. and like it's just crazy because I can specify to you know the AI program and say, hey, I want to have I don't know some nuclear fallout scene yep. with you know red flowers coming through a sidewalk, and it generates it. Mm-hmm. What about the poor, you know, the the guy, the graphic designer that yeah. you know, or the artist that you know went to school for, and it's something that you know he's relying on his career. It's where it's kind of dangerous. That's the the key to me there is not just that you can put in and get the nuclear follow album artwork. Yeah. It's that you get that back and now you have unlimited revisions to send that back again and again yeah. and keep getting and I think that's where cuz you can tell a real person I want nuclear fallout with red font and I want it to be blah blah blah. Yeah. And they're going to send you something and when you say what if we fucking threw that whole thing away and went this way? They're going to say, "Well, give me the money no, again." You, right. And with AI it's like yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> they got nothing but time. Well, now and there's a website that I stumbled upon too because I there there is a specific theme that I'm going for, mm. and I was just looking at like these really cool like you know these android cyborg looking things holding like flowers. It's like the cool contrast between like machine and mm-hmm. you know organic stuff, and it there's a whole list of them, and like there's. They're incredible and they're they're gorgeous mm-hmm. and like sixty bucks yours copyright mm-hmm. everything you can use it for personal commercial whatever yeah and again it's I I want to put my best foot forward to support that person but it's like I got to look at how crazy the world is too at the end of the day it's like okay I spend sixty bucks on this AI generated yeah. picture which rules or have to wait for revisions and go back and forth and spend hundreds mm-hmm. I mean my heart of course says that but yeah. you know. I'm not. I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna do. You know, ultimately, I have a buddy that's gonna take care of me. 
I, um, I come back to like there are there is a time when I want something that I will go online and find the best version of it. Mm-hmm. There's also a time where I want something and I just go to Walmart and find the first one that I can grab. Yeah. And I think AI is a version of that where it's like I think there has to be some limit to what it can create and I, I don't agree. know what that is yeah. and I don't think we found it and I think I'll continue to be wrong about where that limit is and I'll continue to prove me wrong. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I think if I'm... Uh, I think I'm scared of AI that I'm not doing enough. And it's like if if AI comes so far that they're take like they're gonna take the when the bear is chasing you, it's gonna catch the slowest runner first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and as long as you're not the slowest runner, you get away from the bear. Sure, sure. And with AI, it's like yeah, I don't know. They're gonna it's gonna affect some peop some artists' jobs, and it's gonna take away some learning opportunities, and that is detrimental. But it's like I don't know. I think we're gonna learn and evolve and grow with the curve and it's like i think it's like midi i think in the 70s someone would have said like if if someone would have in the 70s when you have to record music to tape and someone says in 20 years mm-hmm. you can do this in your computer and play with it and change it all it's like dude that's no that takes away all the music yeah and i think ai is a similar uh escalation of that i can see that but i think ai is a whole different ball game that we're not very i i don't think we as like a species are mature enough to handle sure and you're the tech guy so you're probably more knowledgeable I, I, and experienced hey, listen I don't, I don't i don't claim to be an sme <laughs> on all of this stuff but sure. um you know as a teenager i was a young you know i was super into you know modding halo 2 for example mm-hmm. and and running you know writing my own little scripts for my my space page so you have an active background and you know cool stuff yeah um the thing that concerns me with ai and we're, we're pretty much the same age we went from in the last twenty years. We went from like a I consider the old internet, AIM, MySpace, dial-up DSL. It was kind of like um, a Dewey Decibel system in the library, <laughs> yeah. old library. Yeah. You're searching for knowledge. It's not constantly accessible. It's mm-hmm. a utility. Fast forward twenty years. Now we have these phones that have incredible processing power. I mean, you can look up anything in the world that you want. It's incredible. We could be geniuses by now. But the problem is it's how we utilize this technology. So I'm looking at how we're utilizing, you know, how mature we are as a species in the last 20 years. But now I'm looking at, you know, because the big hot topic nowadays is social me- media is mm-hmm. causing mental health crises, yeah. crises all over the place, which I can see. Um, the problem is people want to blame, like, big tech and all of these, um, you know, like it's all social media that's causing all of this, um, this commotion and stuff like that in the world. But I'm like, but we as users of these platforms have a responsibility to also throttle that and not just point the figure, uh, the finger at, you know, the one that's providing it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can go to a gas station and, and you, you can, you can blame the cigarette companies for causing all kinds of health issues but it's it's on the person's discretion to go buy a pack of cigarettes, sure, for example. Yeah. I, I look at the same way. It's like the same thing. You know, social media, we got to get rid of it. We got to get rid of it. No, honestly, we don't really need to get – I mean, I, I honestly – I'm not a huge mm-hmm. – I'm, 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 we're also not that target audience anymore. Like I even noticed yeah. like as I got older, like the algorithms weren't – like the ads weren't really totally relevant mm-hmm. to me anymore. I'm like, ah, I'm not that young guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so now my, my issue is like I'm seeing how we're handling our utilization of social media platforms and how it's affecting us. I think we're going to have the same issue down the road with AI where we don't know what's going to be considered an appropriate or healthy amount to throttle. Um, I, I work on, you know, in my job, I work on, you know, troubleshooting a bunch of application issues and um, uh, our, our, our boss, uh, she came up to us and she's like, you know, have you ever used, you know, um, open AI? I'm just like, no, I haven't. And she's like, you can essentially just cop, you know, copy some of the, the code snippets or, or, or the error and, and, and you can type in and, and it'll help you get to a resolution. And I, and I was just like, wow, this is great. That is an area, you know, in a, in a professional career setting where especially being in it would, is extremely helpful for, for me. Cause okay, I've never seen this before. I ask mm-hmm. AI and it tells me what's going on. Yeah. Great. But then again, you have the creative side where, you know, people making art and stuff, even yeah. musically. Like I was like, again, it was discouraging when my buddy like, 
generated a metal song in 30 seconds. Yeah. And there will be a band that will be an AI generated mm-hmm. band, which will be cool. Yeah. So I, I'm waiting for that to happen. There's going to be one band that just generates all of these AI songs and play them live. I'm all for that, but there only has to be one. Um, I'm running so down. You triggered two great thoughts there for me. One, sure. uh, on the AI side of stuff, this is a quick, short story. I have no idea if it's true. <laughs> Very important premise yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, I was in college, and one of my classmates dads worked for Atlantic, one of these big record peoples. And I can't, like, it It wasn't like he was the owner. It wasn't like he was the guy. But, yeah, he was in the door, at least, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this kid was chatting about uh, how they're, and this would have been in 2014, 15. So, like, a while ago in the context of AI in my brain, uh, how they were already at that time using machines to create the next Drake song. And I don't know if it was Drake, Taylor Swift, whoever. But the idea that they were just running songs through algorithms and generating song and seeing what works in the song and using that to generate instrumentals that then would be sent out to Drake or whoever Mm -hmm. as already like a, uh, yeah, this is a tried and true instrumental that has already been crowd tested in some sense Mm -hmm. here go. And I've no idea if that's real, but it makes a lot of sense to me that there's enough Taylor Swift songs out there that someone could design a software to engineer the next Taylor Swift song and incorporate that with the Billie Eilish's and Post Malone's and Mm -hmm. trying to figure out what is that demographic they're hitting and how we incorporate that into Taylor Swift. So it's like, it's not impossible to me that we already are in an age of AI music and we just don't know it yet. And it might not be the Meshuggahs or some band that we're there, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a Taylor Swift song with an algorithmic written beat or lyrics or some combination Mm -hmm. of the two. I could be totally full of shit. This could could have been lying to me, but it seems plausible in my brain. Oh, 100%. And then part two. You're talking about kind of like the, the fear of the AI replacing, uh, and I think I'm generally probably in the same camp as you for the sake of content, for the sake of debate, for the sake of my own enjo- sure. enjoyment. Uh, I think uh, in the old internet, I don't have a job right now. I, like, I only learn video in the new internet. This whole thing is only possible because I went on YouTube, because I spent time sourcing those things and finding the tutorial for this and whatever. And of course, that has to be uh, paired with real life action and experience. I can't just be on YouTube and make the thing happen. But to some degree, I didn't go to school. No one taught me anything. Like my my video journey is a lot like your audio production journey of like, yeah, you went on YouTube, you asked a buddy and you figured it out as you went. Mm-hmm. In the old internet, that's not a case. Uh, so in the new internet, it's now possible. In the future of the AI, I've, the, the argument I've heard is that now that learning curve can be even more efficient because instead of me having to go on YouTube and find which tutorial is the right one, I can just say, hey, AI, find, like, summarize all of these tutorials mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. And now I just get the net of the top 10 photography for beginners tutorials. And instead of spending an hour watching 10 videos, I have a three minute written perfect summary. Right, right. And it's like, is that the same? I don't know. Yeah. But if it, if it empowers more people to become videographers, to learn production, to learn guitar, drums, whatever the fuck, like, maybe there's a world where the AI empowers more creatives instead sure. of stepping on us. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know. None of us will fucking yeah. know. And in 2045, we'll be having the same conversation because <laughs> yeah. the world doesn't move as fast as we think it does when yeah. we're scared. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's an interesting conversation to me. And it's like, a, it's, I think it's reasonable to be scared of it. But I guess I would like to be naive enough to believe that all it does is accelerate motivated creatives and replace the need for creatives who are doing the least amount to get the thing done. Sure. Like the Gent song. It's like... That's not written by a musician. That's written as someone who's looking for a gent song. Yeah. If you want a gent song, great, go for that. Mm-hmm. But if you want a musician, I, I don't know. I don't know if you replace that. Yeah, I definitely appreciate your sentiment on that. Yeah. Because you know? again, I think we're we're just scratching the surface and where it can go. Yeah. You know, I think it, it's a, again an interplay between um, a healthy amount of throttling and knowing what to utilize AI for. Yeah. Um, in an academic setting, it depends. You know, I mean, just on a very high level, I mean, back yeah. in the day, you know, I, I took um, a bunch of math courses in college and, you know, you have like the Texas Instrument TI-84 calculator. Mm. And I mean, it has a, <laughs> a whole bunch of functions on there. You'll fuck most of those buttons, dude. But, but the thing is, though, <laughs> those buttons have simplified so much groundwork in the past. You yeah. don't know, you don't need to know how a logarithm works. You don't yeah. need to know... Yeah. How certain? According to my fucking high school teachers, I did. So <laughs> shout out, y'all. <laughs> but no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. So, yeah. but 
the only issue that I kind of take with AI is that we're going to start kind of forgetting like the fundamental basis of mm -hmm. things. Like yeah. we're going to rely, we're going to be so reliant on AI at some point, not to be negative or, yeah. but I'm just looking at like the possible outcomes sure. of becoming too reliant is that, you know, you start forgetting, you know, just basic stuff, you know, cause it just does everything for you. Mm -hmm. You know, even even though I want to like utilize, um, you know, in, in my career, like, oh great, I have OpenAI now. I can just slam in, you know, the error that is generating in the log, yeah. and it's going to tell me how either to fix it or where to look. Yep. I still exercise the discipline to still evaluate it myself, mm -hmm. consult with somebody that's an expert in it instead of just going to the machine, Right. which is kind of ironic because I work on machines. Mm -hmm. But I still rather consult with another person because I feel mm -hmm. like that sticks. It's more meaningful and being collaborative, I think, is just yeah. better in general. Certainly. So again, the, you know, I, I, you know there, it's no secret that these are extremely crazy times in this world. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just kind of here for the ride and... Mm -hmm. There, there's, there's almost like a beauty to the chaos of all of this because people yeah. are very negative and look at the world as such a terrible look at you know the wars and this and COVID and all this stuff. But it's just, you know, this is kind of our, our expression as a, as a, as a species at some point. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's we create the problems ourselves, but we yeah. also do solve them eventually if it doesn't end up being like, I don't know, some nuclear fallout situation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, the yin and the yang. You know, yeah. you have a balance of everything. Yeah. So. You know, I know we've gone from music to AI. To dude, we covered I it all, it. dude. This is perfect. Awesome. We got an hour 15, so that's like an hour 10 ish, give or take. So sure. perfect. Um, I think we covered most of the most of the stuff. We can always do a round two at some point. Sure. Uh, but as we work on wrapping up here, um, I know we got the. I should be talking into the mic, not to the fucking <laughs> table next to me. Uh, as we work on wrapping up here, so I know we got the solo project in the works. Is there any kind of timeline? Is there anything we would like to say about that? Or is that in the works and it'll be talked about more when it's ready to be talked about yeah, more? Yeah. Um, so the project, I think, is going to be called Latent Self. Hell yeah. Um, it's like started as my like Xbox gamer tag, YOLO. Mm -hmm. um, and it's – I don't want to categorically say too much as far as what I'm – I guess, again, me, me being a very nostalgic kind of guy, mm -hmm. um, the best years of my life were like probably shortly after high school, you know, l low overhead of responsibilities, wilding out with the homies. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was just, I don't know, it just, it was such a special time. Like we were chasing again the proggy gent thing mm -hmm. and going to all these shows with all these proggy, I will say again, genty bands. Um, and I think what I'm trying to do with this project is bring a sense of kind of nostalgia to like a, what I personally think is a great era of like, you know, the proggy, chuggy metal genty scene, like between like, I don't know, call it 2012, 2015 ish. Mm. Um, some space elements, some keyboards, heavy groove, melody, that kind of thing. Hell yeah. You know? Uh, if people are interested in keeping tabs on it, where can they find you? What do they look for on social media? How do they talk to you and tell you that they want to hear more of what you're doing? Right here. <laughs> I have right here. Come no find social me in person. Media. I have here is no my social address. <laughs> we'll put his address right here on you're screen. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, right now I just kind of have like a very rough working demo. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, and again, I like... When I say rough, it's rough. It needs mm -hmm. structure. It needs a little bit of mixing and mastering and love and all that stuff. But it, it's cool because I, I'm just like learning so much as I'm going yeah, through this. So and, cool. and, and the willingness of everyone to help me has just been absolutely incredible. Like no one's ever turned me away. Or mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing is because, you know, a lot of my, you know, mutual, we're all buddies, honestly. Everyone's mad, mad homies, especially in the scene. They give you the criticism that I think is necessary. Yeah. Like, they're not going to just say, oh, it's sick just because. Mm -hmm. You know, I've received a lot of, you know, good feedback and, um, you know, more of a compositional level of feedback, too, where, you know, oh, maybe, you know, these parts, like, they can fit together, but they're not seamless. It's just kind of putting, like, a riff Dude, and that. a groove and a riff and a groove next to each other. You need to find a way to bridge it. To me, the best feedback is you being excited enough to want me to want to help me make it better, yeah. right? So if I send you something and you just say it's good, that's good feedback. And it's better than you saying it's bad, yeah, like, yeah. but it doesn't <laughs> get me anywhere. And when you, when I get feedback that is, this is so cool. What if you 
it's like it can be annoying to have someone, but mostly what I'm hearing is like you are excited enough about what I'm doing that you want to be involved. You want to help shape it. And that is like the most flattering version of the compliment. And even though what they're saying isn't complimentated, right? They're yeah. saying let's let's move this section. This section needs a bridge to it, whatever yeah. the, the musical equivalent mm-hmm. would be. But it's like, no, that is a flattering thing when someone – took enough time and energy and care yeah. to say like, oh, what if? Yeah. So I think that's cool. I think it's a really uh, important thing to mention is, yeah, the, the the feedback is good, but it's not just that was great feedback. Yeah. That is good feedback. Right. It's it's meaningful that you can work with and improve with. For sure. And, you know, when I get to the point, you know, wherever that may be, I'm, I'm realistically, excuse me, my goodness, this is very, uh, <laughs> take one more sip for the home. Mm. Um, I think when I get to that point too, which is really nice, um, let's just, I don't know, give you a rough, rough estimate a month or two Hell yeah. that definitely want to, cause that all the, all the, all the bands nowadays in Connecticut, they'd be dropping singles and albums <laughs> left and right. I got to stay relevant in the scene, my dude, <laughs> sure. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but the cool thing is because of the surplus of yeah. extraordinary talent here, if it, if it gets enough, you know, recognition where people would be down to play it. I have no problem finding I'm sure, yeah. sick guitar players, yep. a sick bass player, a sick vocalist, you know, like the drums are the hardest part to find in every band. And from what I've heard, not that I've ever put a band together, but from what I understand, there is an eternal shortage of drummers. So it sounds like you're in the right position. That, it's to, crazy. To Cause like I just I feel like I've I know so many drummers. Well the thing is though, I guess drummers that are maybe into like the heavy metal sure, yeah. the metal core scene in C T but yeah, I, I I get the same feedback too. They're like, "Oh, it's so hard to find a drummer and stuff." Um, so band before we, do we still have a few more minutes? Hundred percent chilling. So I joined um the Green Invaders, which has been a band for so long. All the homies, yeah, yeah. And um, great dudes. They they were like, "Yeah, we couldn't like find a drummer for you know X amount of years." And you know their old drummer, I think, went overseas. He's in the uh, I believe in the Marines. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just find that crazy because I I feel like. I'm like almost like flabbergasted by all the drummers that are around here now. That's funny. You know, all the the you know, again, the younger younger dudes like the drummer that um I filled in for as with and so without mm-hmm. uh Lucas. Yep. Kid's nasty. Unbelievable. Super yeah. sick. Yeah, and seeing him like filling in for big bands already. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. You know. But then again, I now that I think about it, he's in like two bands and you know, fill in for. <laughs> he's, you know, in he's a hired gun too. He was, yeah, he was just here and we were making fun of him for being in too many fans. Yeah, so. see, <laughs> yeah, I, that, that, and that's my problem too because I've been, I've been, I, I don't want to say I'm like a yes man, but mm. I always, I'm again a huge it's fun team rooter yeah. for for Connecticut music, Connecticut metal, and like everyone's like, yo, you want to start a band? I'm like, yeah, dude. It's like I'm already like in like four other projects that oh, I yeah. just like like I met some some cool ass dude. I'm like. He's like, yeah, man, you like this kind of music? We should start something. I'm like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I kind of position myself where I was kind of stretching myself a little thin, yeah. Yeah. and I, I don't, I don't ever want to be like a hang up or a, um, mm-hmm. a, a weak point because yeah. I, I either can't produce what they're looking for, yeah, um, you know, and that comes from a, a professional level of, just me as a musician personally. I, like if I'm, if I'm, essentially hired or assigned to do something for a band like if it was with as within you know construct construct paradise i was in that band for a little while before things you know kevin pretty much hit the nail on the head in the podcast um when i was listening to it like you know we we got things going for a while things kind of fell apart people wanted to do other stuff but like you know if i if i'm truly in it i'm i'm all in you mm-hmm. know, like I will be dedicated. I will be at practice. I will provide as much creative input where necessary without being overbearing. You know, so. But now that's why I kind of taken on the solar pro- uh, the solo project of mine because I I just kind of want to go at my own pace mm-hmm. and not feel pressure and have yeah. to worry about bringing someone on right now. But again, down the road if it if it catches on, you know, I just start reaching out. Hey, is this something you'd be in- be interested in playing and. Yeah, that's where the future's heading, so it's just something I'm doing for fun, and I'm loving it. Hell yeah, yeah. dude. Well, yeah. the future sounds sick, and I will see you there, my man. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate you making time to come dude, on today. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, stuck to catch up, stuck to chat, stuck to catch, catch up off air. It's always yeah. the most fun part of this yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hell yeah, dude. Episode 17, big... Re-